What's going on guys? It's your boy James. Hey Alexander. It's your boy Fuhat. Just to let you know, the Cocktails and Takeaways live show on July the 4th. I'll be there and I'm hoping to see you there too. Grab your tickets ASAP. Love. people it is your girl madam joyce and welcome to cocktails and takeaways it's been another chaotic week and i'm happy to be sitting down with you guys this week i don't even know where to start summer is finally here the sun is beaming as i stepped into the scene the sun was just grazing my skin and you know what i'm ready for a good uk summer but i hope you guys are good i hope you guys have been working hard i hope auntie Susie has not been stressing you and that bitch that manager that doesn't know how to leave you alone has really cooled down down this week for you and if she hasn't tell her to suck up mom don't tell her that because you're gonna get fired but guys i am here with somebody very very special this week what i mean do you know what i am in a place in my life here that people that i've grown up watching that i've been seeing before i'm in the space i get to sit down and talk to them and i feel like this king in particular wow this king in particular <laughs> It's somebody I'm so honored to call my friend. I'm so honored to be across the table from me right now. So, he is a gifted presenter, content creator, and has become his own brand through his hilarious skits and outgoing personality. I am so honored to introduce Mr. Harry Panera! I can I be honest with you? Go on. Best intro of my life, you know. <laughs> that was detailed, calculated. It because you see me, I know what I'm doing. But yeah. When you hear it from someone else, it feels better. Honestly, Thank you you, you, you know you're my king. You are a king, no, and I feel like you're a queen. Stop it. Do you know why? Why? Because role reversal. You came onto my podcast. Yes. Our first ever episode. And you carried it with your bare hands. You carried <laughs> my it with dry your, hands. No, they were cream that day. Now remember, we got you some cream. They were cream that day. So this is me returning the favor and spreading the love, man. Honestly, I'm so proud of you. That podcast, I feel like, I'm even me personally, I've never seen you in that light before. Everybody knows funny Harry, crazy Harry, bigger than life Harry. So to see you in that intimate moment and to share that experience with you was absolutely fantastic but how are you how have you been unless i'm not going to even talk about how they've you, they've scraped your head yeah no, <laughs> they, they scraped all the waves come off of my head um I'm, so no, I'm 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 good man i'm in a very very good space right now um i've taken a very spiritual journey over the last i say maybe six months um but the last i guess last month i, I was very i won't say lost because i always know what i'm doing in life but i just felt like something was missing and like you said on the podcast that you was on, I uh, spoke a lot about God and how much like without God, there's no direction at all. And God's the reason why I'm even in this position right now. So um, we went to Umrah with a few of the, of the lads and honestly, it completed everything that I felt like was missing in my life. Like, you know, when you get to a place in life where you, you know, you've achieved all the stuff that you've set out to achieve. Um, and of course, there's more things that I'm going to achieve, God willing, but like, that was the one thing I just felt like I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm um, in tune with my religion as much as I, I need to be. And I get a random message from Chunks like, yo, we're going Umrah um, in, from the 31st to the 5th. Like, if you can make it, um, let me know, innit? If you can't, then you should go, inshallah. And I was like, bro, I, the, the message was sent at like 6.47. I replied at 6.47 to say, yes, I'm, I'm there. I didn't even check my schedule, check what's happening. And that week for me, or that five days, was honestly the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life because... I felt like I was speaking to God. I felt like I was, I, I forgave myself in front of God so I could ask for forgiveness and ask for the things that I wanted. And now I just feel like, yo, I'm on a high. I feel like I'm floating right now. I don't feel like I'm, you know, walking around. I don't know what I'm doing. There's purpose now. And, I, and that all comes from just praying and yeah, man, going to the home of, of God. And So just to clarify, Umrah, this is, um, is, is it what people would call Mecca? or Yeah, yeah. so it's in Mecca. It's a mm -hmm. pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, you can do Umrah anytime. Um, but if you do it during Ramadan, it's like one of the, the most, like, greatest thing you can do. 
Um, and it, and it, and they say that like you know praying Umrah during Ramadan is like uh, you praying Hajj with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's like oh, our wow. prophet. It's it's like the reward. Obviously, um, if if Allah accepts your 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 prayers, and it's like just knowing that alone is something that made me want to go there. Um, and just basically just see my religion in the light that it should be seen in. It's such a peaceful, such a beautiful religion. I was able to see brothers and sisters from across the world there for the same thing. And then it puts things into perspective. It's like, you know, when, when this is all said and done, all these material things that we have and all the things that we think matter, they don't. If you have no 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 religion, no um, no purpose. No foundation. No foundation, no yeah. nothing to keep you going. And I think a lot of people that I've met across the line, and I've met people from different religions, the reason why they're probably so, uh, what's the word? So in tune with themselves is because they've had a direction and that direction stems from religion. Yeah. Whether it's from, you know, Buddhism, whether it's from Christianity, whatever it may be, there's some direction. And I feel like that was missing for me. Um, and obviously where I've come from and the stuff I've gone through, it, you know, you can easily just get lost. And I feel like now I've, I've understood what, what it needs to be and I'm so happy. I'm I'm so happy just to see you guys in 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 unity towards a common goal and then to set do a big celebration at the end. Obviously we're in Lent season at the moment and um What have you given up? Do you know what I'm really I'm 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 gonna put my hands up. Yeah. I actually did not give up anything for Lent this okay. year. I can't remember the last time I've given up something for Lent. But I do fast, so I think so. I did a twenty-one day fast where I just had water. Um, I do like three-day fast, so three-day dry fast, or I do like twenty-four hours fast. Those are the type of fast that I do. Um, but I'm not taken away from anyone that has that that wants to give up stuff. And you have to. We all have to start somewhere. Nah, we course, really have to start somewhere. But I think just the, just in this season where everybody's really trying to connect with the maker, mm. intertwine with their spirituality because it's so important like i think sometimes people forget that or from what i from what i know about life and what i've learned is that like we're spirit first mm. and god is spirit so we need to be in a place where we're connecting with him that we're we're being at the center of him we're taking time with him and i feel like these type of seasons are really amazing i went to my pastor's house yesterday and I did prayers and you know we were speaking about God and I was speaking about how since I've been in this space I really feel like I've kind of lost my identity in it's Christ e it's so easy it's so e it's so easy when I was when I was suffering mm. I was so close to God I used to pray because it was I, I needed something it's like I needed someone to rely on and I kind of felt like people weren't giving me what I wanted so I was always leaning on God I was always praying I was like I was a prayer warrior and then once I started when God started giving giving me what I wanted and then you know life is good now we are not yeah, struggling you anymore like you, you just forget. forget yeah and that's like me that's what I was saying about me being lost it weren't to say that I don't know where God is I mm -hmm. always do but when you pray for what you want and you get it you're like well I'm gonna go now I'm gonna go and enjoy and, and that's my point so I was like you know what let me have a bit of balance mm -hmm. let me you know like uh, it's, it's a gradual step in it and I'm not sitting here saying that I'm an imam no because if you then see me now out and I'm enjoying myself don't be like oh why are you here yeah. that's not what it is it's it's my my um my the only person that can judge me is God for me and that's what I'm focused on so I, I don't people shouldn't put pressure on themselves but just understand that this place that we're in right now isn't favored to people that are faithful mm -hmm. it's not we're not we're not living in a country that actually really is very religious do you know what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. so for you to so I guess, you know, be religious or even have faith is very difficult. Yeah, So it is, that's it why is. you need to hone back and go speak to your family or have be around people that remind you of, of all of that stuff and everything else will be will be great. So, so for anyone that is is struggling at mm -hmm. the moment to to get closer to God, to get closer to their religious faith, what would you say to them right now? See, this is the thing. Now, I am not a, uh, I don't like when people, because this happens a lot where people mm -hmm. be like, oh, what would you say to the to the people? And it's like, everyone has their own journey in it. Mm -hmm. I would just say, when you feel something in your heart, because we all feel that place, where, in that, we're all in that place sometimes where we're like, oh, I need to get closer to God. Yeah, and that then, and pulling. Then, and then you don't do it. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand, yeah, that in order to get to where you need to get to in this life, there's two things. You need hard work and you need to be dedicated to something but you also need to have God and pray. Agreed. And I feel like if you if you think you're going to get to the top without it, then that's where, you, that's where you lose it. So I feel like them two together, prayer, religion, and also hard work, they, they go together so well. It's like butter and bread. We put that together, it's a great sandwich. And I think that is the only way I can put it for other people because that's how it's worked for me. I felt like, yo, 
got all of this stuff, prayed for it in the beginning, forgot about God, stuff for Allah, because I never did, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> then I've, 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 I've now found God, and I'm so excited to see what that future, the future looks like. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's and that's what's keeping me smiling every day. I'm just like, I got, I got it. I got I it. Love it. No, honestly, the energy, yeah. the energy is so different. You don't, yeah. I feel like the last time I saw you, you you feel, you now that I'm looking at you, it's the, the word I could describe is lighter. Yeah. I like feel, you feel a bit lighter. Like I, this is how I feel. I feel like I've, I was carrying diarrhea. <laughs> that was messing up my belly. Every time I was walking, I was walking slow. It was messing up my speech. But now I'm, I'm just able to talk more. But yeah, no, we, we thank God anyway. You get I me? love that. Big up here. Big up for everyone who is fasting or finished fasting. I believe this is coming out just after the Obi-Wan celebration. So big up you guys. Well done. Yeah, we're, we're done. We're done. We're, we're done. done. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. But I would like to move on to hot topics of the week. We're going to start with some social media tidbits because okay. I want to talk to you. Obviously, me and you were school kids. Yes. And there was a TikToker by the name of John Wick and he was the talk of Twitter. Mm. Um, there was a viral video of him telling one of his students to shut up. Yeah. So I don't know if you've saw it, but he's... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I see his TikToks a lot still. Yeah, he's very down with the kids yeah, and he's yeah. very like... He's very one of us. Yeah. He didn't he didn't come as a teacher role and gentrify himself. He kept he stayed true to his roots and now he talks to the children in, in them type of mannerisms there. So it really divided the internet and some thought that he should lose his job, but others defended Wick saying those type of teachers were always the favorites yeah. because they could speak in the students in a way in the way that they understand. And since then he's been offered more work. In, yeah. in other I've always been a fan, number mm -hmm. one, of the content. I think yeah. he's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But also, that way of teaching is what I understood. Yeah. Because the generic teachers are not from where we are from or do not understand the lingo and, and, and you know, wh why we're speaking this 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 tone of voice. Yeah. Or how we understand things. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm trying to say? Saying to a kid, could you kindly be quiet? And someone saying, hey, shut up, man. Yeah. Listen to me, yeah. <laughs> You're more likely gonna take that way, the shut up way, because mm -hmm. it's like it's more unanimous, like with the way you speak with your yeah. friends, isn't it? I also remember when I had a teacher, Mr. King, yeah, he used to speak to us as if we was his not his brethren, but like his little brothers. Mm -hmm. He grabbed man by my ear once, yeah, and took <laughs> me to my to, 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 to call my parents, took my mum's uh, number and said, Watch, I'm gonna call your mum when you get home. When I got home, Joyce, I'm looking at my mum like, oh my god. When are you gonna tell me that Mr. King's called? Because I was so sure mm -hmm. that he's gonna call. So then, like, I'm, I'm, she's being too nice to me. I'm like, my mom's really not nice to me when they've called. <laughs> so anyway, the night's gone now. I'm like, okay, I've had I've had dinner now. I've gone to bed. She hasn't said nothing. I've gone to school the next day, and he's gone. I want me, I want you know. Next time, me I call your mom, you know. <laughs> and that's when I was like, all right then, I respect you, brother. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like. For me personally, yeah, everyone can have like as as a as a parent, you wouldn't want someone else to speak to your child like that, which mm -hmm. I totally understand, innit? However, some of these kids, yeah, this is the language which they understand. They understand. And you've got to be you've got to be understanding of that. And I guarantee you that most of the kids in that school probably will go to to John Wick and be like, you know what, sir, can I speak to you, please? And this is how I'm feeling. And yeah. he's gonna give it to them in a way in which they can understand. Sometimes these these teachers are not trained because they don't they haven't lived that life. They're not yeah. from that culture. They're not from that background. Yeah. So relating how the curriculum says you need to speak to a kid in comparison to who a like reality is, sometimes there is you know there's a bit of a, a you know a little bit of a not a fine line, but it is what it is, isn't it? I wouldn't say him for him to lose his job, you know. No. And I think he's just showcasing what it is like to be a teacher mm -hmm. in this generation. And I'm all for it. A hundred percent. I definitely feel like when I was growing up, I would have loved for for me to feel like the teachers understood me, like understood the journey. There was just too much of a separation. And it's like, okay, I'm the teacher and, and you're the student, which to be honest, there needs to be, always be a level of, of respect. Course, of course. But I think having that teacher that you, that can understand you or feel like can understand you is so so important now in terms of i can understand why people are like shut up man and because i think where we're coming from where i'm coming from anyways i never had a teacher that spoke like that mm. because i'm coming from bedford and 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 then the teachers that were black made sure that they they were as english because they and thought, oh, I'm, gonna lose my job. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my job yeah yeah but i think it's really important especially i believe he works in a in a school that is um is for children with challenging behavior. So yeah. I think when you get kicked out of school, they now will fling you to that school. I've been there before. They will fling you to another yeah, we, school. We, we called it, uh, they had. They called it LSU. 
learning support unit in my school. Learning support unit. They'll yeah. fling you to at Stern's So I think he works there. So those are children that really, really have challenges will be able mm. to communicate with your standard normal teacher. Mm. So I'm for him. If that if it's working for him mm. and if it's working in terms of the relationship with him and his students, I say, why not, man? Yeah. But I, I do understand, like I said, that where people that are parents are coming from mm -hmm. who probably don't, speak to their kids that way. Yeah. I'm probably thinking, this is how my kid speaks anyway. This is probably going to be the way he's going to continue speaking or she's going to continue mm -hmm. speaking. So I totally, totally understand that. Mm -hmm. However, like this approach, yeah, I'm not saying it's the greatest approach, but yeah. if it works and, and the relationship that he has with the children is organic and he and he's getting through to the kids, because mm -hmm. it's not like what he's saying is not true. Like some of the stuff I've seen when he's like, this is why you're here at detention because you keep coming late. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you think you can speak to me this way? I'm your teacher. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's there's a fine line between it and I do believe that like, you know, some some people will be against it. I personally, when I was growing up, I can only go with my experience. Those are the teachers, like you said, that I was rocking with. Those are the teachers. Yeah, that those to. were the people that you, you would listen me, to. You understand. So then I'm more likely to sit down and listen to you. It wasn't us against it like no. sometimes it felt like it was student versus teacher. And I feel like that's why for me I had such an issue with um authority. Mm. Like I had a big issue with someone that I felt wanted to wanted to come with it. Can you not? And I will sh I will show you what. But I feel like if the the relatable approach, I feel like would work for students like me at school who didn't know how to deal with authority didn't feel like they were being heard mm. because it's like you guys are speaking a complete other language to me i thought like the teachers that were a lot more down down with the kids were the ones that i liked the ones that i listened to because yes i know you can say some parents don't speak to their teachers like that but that's why a lot of times ch children's communication stems from what's around them their environment their friends so yeah and which is why again i d when you then go to the relationships at home they're not, they're not trying to hear their parents either. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a mad fine line, but yeah. Yeah. E each to their own. Yeah, each definitely to own. E definitely each to their own. I feel like both things work. My, like, my thing is this, yeah. As long as there's a level of respect between teacher and students because the teacher's not your friend. Mm. Like, that, you have that other flip side where it's like, it's, it's too friendly, it's mm. too, you know, oh, you are all boys. Like, mm. no, we're not all boys. I'm your teacher, you're the student. Mm. I care about you and I care about the well-being of your of your um, education, but I also need to, I, I also need to have a level of authority over you. I think, mm. It's, it's it's a weird balance. It's a weird balance because it's like some people want to be G's, you know, with the yeah, kids. No, you, no, can't, you can't be G's. None of these kids are my G's. But yeah. at the same time, <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we ain't boys. It's not, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to phone you or mm -hmm. anything like that. But you just need to know, I understand. You've got to look at them like your little brother who you're just disciplining and, and, and speaking to a certain way, innit? I agree. If you was a teacher, what kind of teacher would you be? Um, I can I, see you being a teacher, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I wanted to be a teacher, innit? Like, really? I've, I've always, not, not a teacher. Like a so I've always, uh, so I, like I said before to you, I've worked in a prison as a mentor before, innit? I wanted to basically use my experience to defer kids from going down that path. Wow. And being that, that yo, I've, di I've, di I've done it. I've mm -hmm. lived it, yeah, and mm -hmm. I've got out of it. It's not that easy to get out of it. I'm yeah. showing you that it's not. And mm -hmm. leading by my examples rather than being one of those teachers that, you know, hey, English, nah, I didn't want to do that. Um, but I do, I think I'd be one of those teachers. I think I'd be a bit like John, you know, I'll be honest, I'll be like, listen, I'd be very like, you know, what I need to do. But then when, when they get me mad or if, if they're disrespectful, then I'll show them the side of, listen, this, I ain't the one. I will do it you. Or you get out of this class because what what these kids are focusing on is education. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm here to teach you guys. So anyone who I feel like has got a problem with that, you can go. And you can bring your dad in as well. Because then we can... <laughs> I'll conk your dad's head, though. Listen, my mom, yeah. And the thing, this is obviously, I grew, I grew up with just my mom. Mm. And I felt like, my mom was not fighting no battle for me, mm. ever. As in, to the point where, like, there was one time they took my phone over the weekend. And she let them have it. And she said, I, I cried, I cried. She said, well, what, why did they take it from you? <laughs> well, is who your mom, yeah? Because this is how my mom was, yeah? Uh -huh. Anything that the teachers say is gospel. Gospel yeah, and see, Bible. This is it, mum. Are you? Like, I, I hope you understand that gospel it's not always true. And Bible. It doesn't matter what that teacher said about me or why I was in trouble. My mum would always take the teacher I side. Trust me, that. because sometimes they were actually the villains of my story. I remember one day though. Like I think it was 
maybe year five, year six, yeah, it's when my mum started to realise that there's an agenda against me. Mm-hmm. Because throughout <laughs> like, my whole... Like, I remember when I was in year two, yeah, mm-hmm. it was so mad how much times they used to call my mum, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was walking out of my school and I said to my mum, am I going to get beats today? And then this this um, girl was like, she started busting up. She was like, what, you get beats? So I was like, you don't know what's happening in my household, how much times they call it. But then it got to a certain stage where she started to realise, no, it can't just always be you, innit? Mm-hmm. So I think it happened bare for them to like, my mum to realise. To realise there's a problem But in here. the beginning stages, anything they would say, she would agree. Like, there, there would be no. no argument. None at all. I'm glad she changed in the process. because man, to. to year 11, to the to the D day, to the GCSE day, my mum was on their side. So your GCSE period. day, yeah? Talk mm-hmm. to me, yeah? Was it a deadly day or was it a very good day? Do you know what? I actually went, I went in by myself. I went in with my girl, Chelsea. And I remember my heart was racing. I was, all I wanted to, I knew that I was going to do English. I, mm. Actually, no, it was English maths and science, but that maths, maths, I said, there's no way I'm passing this. Because maths, I had two classes that were my sleeping classes. Okay, good one. German yeah. and maths. See, maths when was I, science. Which one though? Every single every single every one. Science. I don't know. Three anything. naps. I, I only found out what H two O was after I left school. I'm, I'm finished. I'm <laughs> joking, I'm joking. But uh, like, to that level, it was horror. But yeah, go on. You're saying. Yeah. So maths was my sleeping lesson. So when they were like to me, if you don't do, if you don't do maths, if you don't pass maths, you have to retake it when you go to sixth form. Mm. And I did not want to retake it because that would have been the end of it. I would have yeah. carried my life not having any GCSE maths. Yeah. So when I opened the letter. And I saw the C grade. I I actually collapsed on the floor. I said, hey. wow. congratulations. Yes, I have all GCSEs. The only thing I didn't pass was history, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah, so with me, um, I don't <laughs> think anyone knows this, but I genuinely have three GCSEs. Now, you got to understand, yeah, there's context to it. Isn't it? <laughs> I went to a school where there was a lot of violence happening, left, right, and center. So studying and focusing was very difficult, yeah? And up for me personally, I feel like I was very intelligent in school and I still feel like I am anyway. But the three uh, GCSEs I was able to get was uh, drama, English literature, and physical education. Now, when I went home, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing, yeah nothing else. Even, nothing even RE, even RE that was so easy. I just, I said, get <laughs> rara, get, man. So I remember, yeah, I went to school, everybody's opening up their letters, I'm seeing 10 GCSEs. I'm seeing 11, I'm seeing nine, I'm even seeing six. Me, I've got three. <laughs> so, all, and, 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 and and to be honest, in school, I was in all the top sets, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I was in set one, set two. The, the lowest I was ever in was set three. And that was for science, yeah? So cool. I get home now. My dad's at work, my mom's upstairs cooking, yeah? She can hear that I've come in, but I'm staying in, downstairs in my room. I've just got the PlayStation on, I'm just playing. And I'm waiting for her to come down because I know she's going to come down. And mm-hmm. she's gone. Where's your GCSEs with us? Gone there, over there. I'm playing, I'm playing, and then she looked and she said, "You see, I, you see, I told you." And then she goes, "Wait, no, 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 wait until your dad comes home." And then when my dad came home, it was like two people tag teaming me, just finishing me, just saying, "Look, yeah, this is why you're gonna fail." And I remember, yeah, I'll never forget, yeah, like that's when I realized, yeah, like that's when it hit me, and I was just like, maybe. Maybe I should have listened to our parents, listen, yeah. innit? But in the, in the grand scheme of things, it, it worked out anyway, so here we are. You yeah. know when the parents do tag team? No. They're like, see your son! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's your son! I'll be telling you! No, <laughs> I was telling you, you see? That, that boy, uh, uh, John, uh, all of these boys, yeah, got, I told you, failure. Can I just say something, yeah? Oh, the man. parents love using your friends yes. as case study. Yes, yes. When Johnny was in the library yeah. and uh. he was reading this book, Johnny, he got a, 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 yeah, seven yeah. GCSE. <laughs> seven, seven GCSE. He got a GCSE. Oh, that's the, oh. Johnny, he's a good <laughs> boy. When it's you, you'll be coming home at nine o'clock. Johnny is trapping at the bando. <laughs> yeah, his phone's ringing. He's just got someone that's doing his homework for him, but you would never know, man. Hotline bling. Hotline is trapping off. What are you talking about? Hot, there was one. Ah, oh, there was one girl called. I'm not even gonna say her name yet. Fuck it. There was one girl called that used to go to my school. No, 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 no. no it, wasn't, it was one girl called. Um, oh, nah, definitely. I can't say her yeah, name. Yeah, that's her there's her one name, black man. girl. And then I cut that shit out. <laughs> there's one black girl that went to my school, and my mom used to always compare me to that girl. This time, this girl lost her virginity when she was 13. See, now. And, and, and hadn't stopped since. She yeah, was, out, she was outside. Yeah. 
head. And she's like, yeah, that, that Shanice girl. You know that Jamaican girl you always yeah. hang out with? She's so good. Why do they say Jamaican like that? And then she said, Jamaican girl. She's so good. She'll come on on time. She's always reading book. And you. Yeah, I said. Ah, bro. I'm always there with my cousins. These are my cousins are out here, <laughs> but they're just smarter with outside. it as well, outside. But role reversal, my co- my mum's, uh, so my cousins, their mum used to think I was the good guy because I would come to the house, show so much respect. And like, because my mum's not calling them to tell mm-hmm. them what's happening, they think everything is it's all good. good. But when they really found out, then I remember one they time said, I was wow, my we? house, my auntie looked at me like, yeah, yeah, just the same as him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just the same. Look at you. You guys, this is all you do. Oh, but I miss, I, listen, everything we've gone through, I wouldn't change. Not Neither would one, I. Neither not would one I. one bit. Neither would I. Because them science lessons were lit. That's when the Bunsen burner and them things, I'm just trying to learn how to do little bits. Where's the fire? I, I'll never forget though. Um, Sexual education, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is how I got sent to the principal's office, yeah. <laughs> now, look, I was a kid, all right? Mm-hmm. So sexual education now, the ladies, uh, the teacher's teaching us, and she's like, oh, this is this, this is that. So I said, oh, miss. She goes, oh, yes, Harry. She goes, um, it's me. When are we going to do practical? <laughs> and she looked at me, her jaw dropped, and she said, get out. And everyone was laughing. I was like, ah, and I walked away like, <laughs> if there was slow music, yeah, the this is how they've been walking. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I, I felt like the man, but yeah, but I got in trouble. Punch line. Yeah, it was literal punch, punch line. line. Do you know what? Yeah, funny enough, my first fight mm. happened in science. To be honest, I just was, I was a proper villain at school. I don't know. I, I was, I'm sure a lot, a lot of people go back and be like, do you know what? Yeah, Joyce was actually a villain. Yeah. But yeah, I can't remember what happened. I think um, there was a girl in front of me, and this was the first week of us come, uh, first week of school, first week of secondary school. And um, she she had all this stuff in her hair, in really. it. And I am a, I've always been a no filter babe, but when I was younger, it was worse. Like I would just say anything. So I was like, excuse me. I was like, you've got like bare white stuff in your hair, hair? like bare white stuff. Oh, dandruffy. And, yeah, like dandruff, but it was oh. dandruff, like, flaky, and it was flaky. greasy, everything. And I was like, sorry, you've got like quite a lot of white stuff in your hair. And she was like, oh, um, I was moving house over the weekend. And I was like, babe, it's Wednesday. Yeah, that's Why not you good, yeah. yeah, that's not unless you're living she's in like, a mansion. Yeah, she's like, I'm like, babe, it's Wednesday. So what what happened to Monday? She's like, girl, over the weekend, today is Wednesday. So tell me you found that. I yeah. was a vi- yeah, yeah, I was bad. a villain. So yeah, then she now saw me at lunchtime and then came up to me and swung for me. No. And that's that set the president for the rest of my whole school life, yeah. basically. Oh my god. It no, set I, the president. I, I rate her. She said she probably said no. Nah. She said, "This am I a mug? <laughs> am I a mug?" And then probably one of our bridges was like, "Are you, are you gonna have that? Are you gonna have that? Are you gonna take that?" Because that's one thing in school that I realized a lot of people used to do. It's the stirrers. It's the stirrers. And I would say, "No, no, don't have oh, it. Oh, no." <laughs> and then there's a certain like, for example, if I had someone like Dan in my school, and he's laugh, I probably <laughs> would be in jail for murder. <laughs> Because that, that that laugh is is it makes things it's worse. On the basis yeah, and it comes, yeah, you're right. It, it comes, comes from the, the, gut. the gut. So it's like that's that's my point. It's like school is 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 for me. I've always said that school is the most testing period of my life. Hundred percent. That's where your character is built, broken down, re re jigged. Everything. It's all there. Lich, um, t- literally, school for me was so character building. And funny enough, even. I felt like my character, my personality derived from specifically secondary school. Mm. And li- that's why when I'm talking about my live show, look, I'm about to drop my, my stuff. Oh, sorry, sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. sorry, no, 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 sorry. Uh, no, 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 I was ready for that. Oh, see, I, do you know about my live show? No, but I've seen that it's doing mad numbers. Is it sold out already? It's not sold out yet. Well, people, will, will it be out by? But will it no, be, it's out, it's okay, out. Okay, no, but I'm saying like, Will this episode be out? Yeah. But if you don't go and buy the tickets and see the show, because you're going to see guests, you never know. H3 might come on stage quickly, little 10 minutes. So please go and buy some tickets ASAP. You need, No, but you need to be there. I will be there. H. I'll P. Be there. I'll be there. Sussy boy. I will be there. Sussy boy. As long as I'm front row and that. Yeah, <laughs> no, you have, yeah, to, be, yeah, no, you have to be. I have to be front row. But the whole, the whole, the whole guise of the show is actually based on secondary school like i felt like i had my best conversations there i felt like i had my best experiences there i felt like i had my best friendships there like it was when the only thing that we used to worry about is is things like school uniform can i just say something let me let me tell you how god is good 
when I was younger, I always, always wanted kickers. I I could not afford kickers. Yep. I used to wear those five pound plimpsons from Shoe Zone. That's Can I good. just Shoe Zone? I'm not. I shouldn't. Know, I, this is something I would say if Harry's not on here, but I wouldn't say it now because I, I every time you guys are always grabbing Harry by the yes. neck. <laughs> 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 grabbing Harry. But Shoe Zone, the five pound Shoe Zone, you know, and even when the shoe used to open, you have to glue it back. No, no, flippity flip. Super, you have yeah, to yeah, glue yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah. Super glue. And and I and I remember that I always wanted kickers. Mm. Always wanted kickers. And my mom just, I just never could afford them. Mm. So when I did my shoot, I bought two pairs of kickers, the the black ones, the normal black ones yeah. and the Peyton ones. Yes. The bad bees had the yes, Peyton yes, kickers. Yes, yes. And I remember opening them. And for some reason, I was just literally like tearing up because no. I was like, wow, I can finally wear this shoe. No, <laughs> and you know what? Kickers was like the Dior's, the LV's that everyone yes. has today. And I remember I had one pair of kickers and, and it lasted for two years. So them, Did them it last kickers, it or yeah. you made it work? No, it, I made it lasted, all right? So, you know, like around the ring of the kickers, it will start going white and then it starts becoming, you start to fill the ground. Because I that's wouldn't how, know. Yeah, well, one day you, you may know if you wear them a lot, but kickers for me, that was the staple shoe. Mm-hmm. In I don't know if it was London, but for me it was in South London. So to have them now, it's kind of like, with me, the things that I do now, like for example, going to watch my team play, you think I could go and watch them when I was a, when I was a kid? In a box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See the ticket. <laughs> like my point is, it's like reliving your childhood dreams as an adult is an incredible feeling. No, it is. It is. There's one more thing I really want to buy though. What? Just ran. I've always wanted a Nintendo DS. I think I've always wanted a Nintendo DS. I remember. To, no, seriously, don't laugh. I remember like for a free, DS. free Christmases straight. I begged my mum, mum, I want a Nintendo DS to the point where on her Mother's Day card, I put, mum, happy Mother's Day, can I have a Nintendo DS? Wow. And I never got it. Well, I feel like people, if you've seen this and anyone that knows that how to source it. So if anyone, do, do they still have them around? I'm sure you can get them from like CEX or something. Guys, it'll I, definitely be used and, and abused. I, but, yeah, it'll, but it'll be battered, yeah. but I want a Nintendo DS. That's, that's my next thing, because I think after the kickers thing, Actually, I was you like, know, I'm going to get you a DS. You know I'll start crying. I'm, no, I'm gonna bogeys. get your DS. I'm gonna get your DS. That's my, that's my present for you. When is your birthday actually? September thirtieth. Okay, but maybe not for them. But yeah, I'll get you one before that. <laughs> soon. I'll get one you of one these soon. days. 100%. I will cry, you know, with bogeys. That's good. That's good. Like Viola right. Davis. Then, so but funny enough, speaking of school, everything we're back on the school theme. Yeah. We've got question of the week. Okay. So question of the week this week is: What is the dumbest thing you got in trouble for at school? Um. Dumbest thing I got in trouble. Not for. baddest thing, dumbest thing. Because the thing is, that for me, I feel like I was bad at school, but mm. I think what was annoying was that I was bad and loud. Mm. So I always used to get caught. Always used to get caught. So during my exam, during my GCSE exam, I think it was for maths. Definitely for maths because the grade I got was a reflection of that. Um, we used to do this thing. I don't know why. Like I, I feel like I've always had maybe like. Uh, I don't want to say it because there's people that actually do have it, but I, th- I felt like I've always had ADHD because I haven't actually diagnosed myself yet because <clears throat> I couldn't stop myself from doing these things. So in our exam hall, there's about maybe 200 kids in the, in the exam hall and I used to just scream out of nowhere, like randomly, I'll just scream. Like So the teachers would be like, everyone would be quiet. But ah! <laughs> and then you'll never know where it comes from. But because I know I've already failed, I feel like, ah, I've given up now mentally, I'll clock out, innit? So then there's this thing that we used to do, yeah? Like, you know when your phone's vibrating? Mm-hmm. 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 So I was doing that for like a good 15 minutes. Then they caught me red-handed. They caught me red-handed. And I was the, I was the butt of the joke because everyone stopped after that. And it was just me. So I'm walking out now and everyone's just <laughs> laughing. And I remember the worst thing is I got a call and then my mum was like, yeah, um, your son, he's not giving over his phone. My mum was like, he doesn't have a phone. <laughs> He doesn't have a phone. So I just looked like an idiot. My mum was like, what are you doing? What noise are you making? Because all I kept doing was, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then someone else would start. And then everyone, ah, oh, but it was me. I got caught, the ringleader with no phone. Ringleader. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's for me the dumbest thing that got me in trouble. Still. You know what's so bad, yeah? For some reason, every time it was exam season, that's where you decided to, do, to start your dumb I, shit. I, I just felt like, I think I've always wanted to be the center of attention yeah. for jokes. 
Like I've, I've I've always just wanted to be like that, innit? So the class clown, class clown was my me. thing. I'll take that. I'll I'll, I'll have that. As I uh, they weren't the giving clown. me the, they weren't giving me bad B. Unfortunately, I was, yeah, yeah. I was See, too. I had to be. I, they wasn't giving me um top G. They wasn't giving me um <laughs> best looking. <laughs> they wasn't giving me most money, best tracksuit, best nothing. So I said class clown. I'll hold that. <laughs> I'm I'll, take I'll take it. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have that. I'll I have remember that. we went to an exam, yeah, and before basically, I I'm I'm diagnosed with ADHD. Medically, but yeah. um, so I need to get my medical check. Yeah, you need to get stuff, medical. And yeah. I, I didn't get diagnosed till my adult years. So I got diagnosed when I was in uni. When I when I did my one year of uni, yeah. and <laughs> so I, I did um four months, twenty two days. Big up us, educate, yeah, 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 educate. Yeah, yeah, I did four months, twenty two days, man. And I went to two different unis as well. Love, love, love. <laughs> Yeah, London met man, London met they saw me for two months and then they, they started calling my mum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't fall now. Anyways, let me I'll just chop this dude don't fight. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still kissing me, oh they can't catch me. They can't catch me, man. I don't know. Uh, Eddie can't get it out. <laughs> can't that shit out. But yeah, I remember we went to we went to an exam, yeah. And um before I told everyone, listen guys. Well, like the exam was at like half ten. I said, mm. guys, at eleven o'clock, we're gonna start coughing. Mm. Well, everybody start coughing. Oh everybody start days. coughing. Everybody yeah. start coughing. So we all sat the class. We're all sitting there. We're sitting there. Everybody's looking at the clock. Got to eleven o'clock. <coughs> Someone. <do. coughs> yeah, yeah, you look with terrors. <laughs> and literally, you'd have the whole. And man, there's only four or five vigilators. One of yeah. them. What? Actually, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, 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 because we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We had four or five vigilators. There's like 50 children trying to stop them from <coughs> coughing, 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 coughing. But again, I was the group leader as always. Yeah, but so, this is the thing though. Like, I, again, I believe though. Like, even though obviously it's in school, it's it's we're not supposed to behave that way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't think we could genuinely help ourselves at the time in it. And upon reflection, it's not something that I feel like. You see that a lot with a lot of kids now, though. Mm -hmm. They're probably in school doing the same things that we've been doing. Yeah, it's generational. It happens all the time, in it. But I found I find the fun in that because I've and yourself have created a career out of being like this, in it. So to anyone that's watching, if you are doing that and you're messing around in school and stuff, yeah, don't look at it as if it's a problem, like to have ADHD. I feel like no. some of the greatest people in the world. <clears throat> have a, a deficiency that probably not everyone else has. Like people that have autism, people that have so many other things are amazing people. Maybe school yeah. just isn't for you and you're showing and you're showing that you need something more testing, more suited for you. Because that's what I feel like I 100%. need. 100%. Do, you know I, I mean? do you know what it is as well? The curriculum, it does not fit. The, the structures does not fit how our brains work. Mm. And I feel like I want to I wanna go back to school and I want to talk about the importance of the content space and the digital space like you're talking about people you're talking about a curriculum that is suited for traditional jobs like nursing doctors historians teachers but what about photographers what about people who want to get into digital marketing what about people who want to be content creators a content creators or personalities or presenters or, or stuff like that there's no there's nothing to really cater for them. I think I spoke about this on your on your yeah. show in my bagging. <clears throat> no, no, you, you did. You've spoken to me about this before, but I mm -hmm. think also though, yeah, I don't even think like that. That's a mad thing to say because it is becoming a thing where it, we are. It's a job. Mm -hmm. It's actually becoming a job now. So a but, real job. But but I would always say though, yeah, as much as like um, we do this job and we enjoy it, it's not that easy. And I think there's a lot that comes with it. So I think if we are going to educate the people about that, there needs to be a real, real education. A about. real education. Yeah, because it's like, you see all of the glitz and the glamour and, and the work that people get and the money and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. Oh, well, we're in this space, so I flew with this brand and I did this and I did that. But then there's the other side to it as well. You then become public enemy number one. A target. Yeah, you become a target. And That's how like, everybody mm -hmm. will be my comments calling me fat bitch, fat yeah, bitch. Yeah, or they'll be calling me names <laughs> left, right and centre. And, 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 and it's all about like understanding that. And, and I wouldn't want to put no young kid who probably doesn't have that confidence to deal with that stuff in, a, in into the firing line. That's because, true. Because it can really break someone. It, it really can. And I feel like if you haven't gone through life experiences that that are more testing than, you know, the whole social media coming at you, then I think that will be very detrimental to you. Agreed. So I think if we are going to implement that as a curriculum, th it, there needs to be people who are actually in it or who have worked with people in it that understand how Agreed. to teach people in it. And I feel like on the flip side, just having, because having things surrounding internet safety. So weird, I was talking to my, I was talking to my, one of my old teachers mm. um, just the other week and they basically remove 
all the students' phones. So when they're in school, they are not allowed to have their phones. Mm. They have to put it in like a lock bag, in a mm. zip lock bag that locks, and then they can open it at the end of the day because mm. of how much internet drama then filters into school. Mm. But I feel like it'll be so good to kind of have those conversations with kids about internet safety, mm. about, you know, body dysmorphia that can mm. that can form from using filters and things like that rather than completely avoiding the situation like well out of school do what you like but in school it's not a problem mm. i feel like definitely some way implementing that because it's a big part of their lives mm. is a big and part a lot of, their of kids so I, find, I don't know what it is i don't know if someone has to tell me about it but like when a lot of young kids come and approach me and ask me for a picture yeah and they may repost the picture they always block their faces now I'm like, what is this? What trend is this? Because usually when I was younger, if I take a picture, so I want them to see what's me. <laughs> I was there in the picture. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it for me personally, because what I thought is that the way they think they should look on social media based off who they are, whoever they're following or whatever, you know, the boys or the girls are looking like today, if they feel like they don't look like that, they don't want no one to see their face. Wow. And, and I feel like a lot of the profiles that we see is a reflection of that. They don't have the money to buy the clothes that everyone else is wearing. So their post, their Instagram post is no pictures. It's literally nothing. Mm-hmm. But they're following everyone and, and, and they have friends and, and so on and so forth, in it. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure. Not And, and we are, t- not to blame, but we are obviously a lot of the people that who they follow. So if I'm wearing a certain amount of clothing or, or whatever and they look up to me, then they're going to think, okay, cool, that's what I want to wear. Because mm-hmm. I used to do that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, I think there's a lot of... Um, education that we also have to give to these young kids because we was also in their in, in their shoes yeah 10 15 years ago for me because i'm pretty old but like it's <laughs> like that, that that's why i i don't really look at the kids and i'm like why are you not like that because mm-hmm. this is a whole different life that they're yeah. living a generation that they're living in and it's it's really tough so yeah that education needs to be very holistic as well agreed 100 percent yeah. agreed and i'm just going to read through what some of the bad boys and girls said yeah. that their dumbest things that they got in trouble so me and my girl would go to the coat room and steal people's pack lunch boxes during break time (laughs) we took all the good snacks like the dairy lee dunkers and chocolate dipping sticks (laughs) choc dip whatever that's called that dipping thing the blue one and which then, one is that? That's the, oh, the, 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 yeah. the oh! And then, and then there was a uh, cream one. So which the, was the, the breadstick with the chocolate. Yeah, yeah. And then Slapped. the white one. That one. I, I would steal that too. I yeah. would steal that too. Back in the day, though. Yeah, back in the day, though. Back in the day, though. <laughs> Derry Lee Dunkers with the, stru- with the straw cheese. But then there was a haram one that had a little bit of ham in it. Oh, you, you yeah. put the crackers and the cheese and, and that, the and then, ham. Yeah, the ham, yeah. I remember them days and I couldn't have it because, yeah, stuff for a lot of business. I would that slapped too hard. Or maybe I had some. Who never <laughs> You never know. Let me, let me finish the story. One day we got too comfortable and forgot to look out. And a second later, my teacher caught me arms deep in someone's lunchbox. And I couldn't even lie and say it was mine because it was a football one. Oh, wow. <laughs> she definitely knew we were stealing. But in these situations, it's deny, deny, deny. She let us go big up her. Have you ever have you ever stolen from school? Um, yes, I have. Okay. I stole a Tamagotchi um, when I was in year three. Not, oh my God, yeah, the Tamagotchi. Early doors. So I saw it, preed it, told the guy, yeah, I got that same one at home. He went out to play. I stole it from his bag. Next day I came into school and I was just like, oh, look, I got the same one. Me as an idiot, he had his name on the back of it. <laughs> so he told the teacher, look, that's my Tamagotchi. His name was on it. Caught red-handed. They called my parents and the... the, the yeah, I'd rather not say what happened when I got home, but the, I never did school, it. Skooski school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skinny cake, 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 bum, The neighbors must have thought it was uh, still pan in my house. Still pan drums. They thought the family were playing drums together. What? Hey, that 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 embarrassment of my parents was was incredible. But yeah, oh, and I don't days. know why, because I'm not a thief. I am not. St- I've, I've not, never been known as a robber. But mm-hmm. that day, I, I, something got over. Something got over. I really wanted that Tamagotchi, and I, I knew. I want it. God, my parents wasn't gonna buy it for me, so I want it. Yeah. I got a Tamagotchi eventually, but I yeah. think one time I stole a skipping rope. Okay, that's that's I, okay. I stole, I, because someone stole my skipping rope. But this is how chain of command goes. Yeah, someone stole my skipping rope. My mom actually, for the first time, gave me five pounds to buy a skipping rope. My, my mom don't don't let me have shit. Yeah. So I got the skipping rope, and I was like, wow, skipping rope, and it was pink, and somebody stole my skipping rope. Someone took it from my bag, and I came in. My bag is gone. And I said, okay, cool. So two days later, I saw someone else's skipper. I said, no, 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 just give me that one. At the school, I, I don't think I've stopped. 
Okay, let me confess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I don't, I don't want to come across as a, a pastor, but today, confess. Confess. So there were these, I'm so sorry, there were these, um, for some reason, my school bear had bear budget. Mm. They had these, um, not iPhones, iPods, okay, iPods. iPods. Oh, they wow. had iPods. And I remember there was the iPods at school in it and I didn't have a phone. I, I, I had a phone, but it wasn't anything. This is when everybody was using, I think this was between the time everyone was on Blackberry, just transitioning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there was an iPod at school and I remember I swiped the iPod and I came back into school like the iPod was mine. And I carried that iPod for the next... They didn't catch me. Not, I'm not like you. They didn't catch me. Oh, wow. I carried the iPod like it was mine for like two, three years. I had the iPod for time. That's what I was using as my phone. So when I you know, I know she's a, from ENDS. You said swiped it. <laughs> that is old school. Yeah, man, swiped that still. Keep up school. And yeah, that was me. I had my little iPad. This was before they had to find my iPhone and everything. Yeah, yeah, so you like you been, can, they would have got you. They would have got, got me in my, in, my, in my house in Bedford. They, they would have knocked on your door as well. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. That's my son's iPad or iPod. iPod. And then your mum would have been like, no, 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 take it, take it. Because I didn't buy this for her. <laughs> I, I didn't know. It's, it's yours. Do you know what? I'm going to be honest here. Yeah. If I had any problems, like if the police was to knock on my door, yeah, my mum would say she's over there. Yeah, yeah. Same my, mom, my mom would not. You know, there's some people that, I, will, I don't know. Like, yeah, they would yeah, fight. Yeah. I, that's why a lot of times I don't I, I don't do anything but I didn't do anything by when it comes to lawful stuff because if push comes to shove my mum is she's taking co- you're my going is she'll carry you she'll my mum would say okay we're going to run away to my sister she'll take her to the police station mm. that's that's my mama big up her with the morale and that you got me? <laughs> okay. another another person said my mum gave me money to buy a PE kit but they had run out of my size so I used the money to buy yoghurt and spring rolls oh <laughs> whoa wait, wait 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 so I used the money to buy yoghurt and spring rolls for all my friends and enemies <laughs> wait friends and enemies wait, wait. yeah you don't rate your mum that's what it is, is it friends and enemies yoghurt no but yoghurt come on man wait, who wait, has yoghurt so what you you went you went on board, um, Activia Activia or was it Mula Corner? What was it called again back in the day, Mula Corner? Yeah, you've lost your mind. You deserve to get beaten. Listen, when you were younger, yeah. Why did we spend money on dumb shit? Yogurt. Like, I know. I'm, no, yogurt and spring rolls. <laughs> who? No, who does that? Spring rolls. So wait, no, no, no. What school did you go to? Where was your heater? Did you have like, a microwave so in much- there? to unpack it so hold on your mom gave you money to buy a pea kit a whole pea kit so we're talking about maybe I'm at that time maybe 40 i'm not gonna pounds. lie let's let's actually maybe 40 yogurt pounds your mom gave me 40 pounds spring rolls your mom gave you 40 pounds for a pea hey. kit top and bottom you use the whole 40 pound to buy yogurt and spring rolls do you know how do you know how that sounds like 40 year old me i think my mom would look at me and say okay no seriously let me just ask you are mm-hmm. you sick like, I think she'd ask me, are you well? For her friends and for her enemies. So you're Not just going just around friends. like, yeah, 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 yogurt, 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 yogurt. You can find me in the club. Oh, yeah, balling. Because 40 pounds back then, that's like four bills. That, yeah, basically. That's four bills. That's a lot of money. She said, my mum asked me where the money was and I said I left it with the secretary. Yeah, that's well. She even went to lie. Anyways, your mum is clearly rich. When I was yeah. digging in the in the PE, he lost that round. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I Bam. used to I used to put like see if I found like two P, one P, five P, ten P on the floor. I'm picking it up and I'm adding it together. Were like, you one of those businessmen that used to buy the one pound like packets nah, from the pound shop? I was never I wish man. I wish I was, I, but I was just too lazy. Too much work, There's too man. much work. I've come man. to school. Let me buy the thing, man. Let me just eat it, man. I don't Do you know what I mean? Business. Like there's people that was a uh, um Pound saver across the road from this mm-hmm. bus stop in Peckham that we everyone used to take to go to. And if you went to school like in the Campbell Campbell area or Brixton area, you'd get on this bus in it. And it was a shop. There was always the guys you'd see spending five pounds buying like all the chocolates, all the all the sweets, all the drinks. I was never one of those people. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't have the business mind when I was younger. But I think I've learned how to be a businessman now. Now I go be all day, you know. That let let them know. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read one more. <laughs> Our white teacher was asking for stereotypes and I said white people don't bath. Hey! <laughs> and then she sent me to the principal. Hey! <laughs> but let us, let's be honest because honesty is a great policy it is. to have. The clips that I've seen on social media of uh, people that don't bath are usually white people. Yeah? I rarely see black people saying I don't bath. It's just a thing. We bath every day. Mm-hmm. I don't know about this three times a week business. So, 
that lady may, in that yeah, time. Yeah, three times a week. That's a thing. It, no, it, it is a it's thing. Understandable. Do you get me? So big up all the white people that bath every day because no, shout out Uno, shout out Uno. But yeah, not bathing every day is wild. Like I understand when you have a little lazy day. Yeah, you, you ain't been working or you're at home. Fine, you're in your own space. But the minute you go into public space, you need to you bath. need to be considerate of other people's you noses. You know what? You, you know what? Re- you, honestly, I love the white people in it, so yeah. don't be offended. But back in school, yeah, what used to really make me feel uncomfortable? Talk to me, because if it's the same thing as me, I'll vomit now. <laughs> just, go, just go and talk to me. You know where white people eat pasta? Yeah? Oh, you see it there! <laughs> oh, I hated it! Yes, and you see the white, you see the, no. the red pasta? I hated it. it actually, to this day, it proper makes me feel sick. Is that the same one? Yes, because I, I was about to say, you see this here, yeah. and then you're talking to me, I'm like, just go, just do this, or lip. When do they have the dry sides or the ones with the pasta? No, pasta hair. No, pasta. Because it used to be ravioli when I was in school, yeah? Oh. But but also, what I hate is spit hair. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That can make me, like, genuinely vomit. Like, I can vomit, feel yeah. sick. Like, even think about it now. I could, go, I could, go, I could, I could on this table right now, I could just... You can out. just release. Like, no, uh, no, that one to this day. And then there was one particular boy, like, even the next day he would have, that's like, you don't bath because the next day you will still have the same spaghetti, no, if, the spag bowl. If I'm being honest, like, that for me was, was, yeah, like, just seeing that, it's just, yo, just wipe your mouth. Wipe, wipe your, your mouth. mouth. Wipe your mouth. Don't wipe forget your mouth. to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, dear. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, your subscribe. Subscribe, Okay, so this week we have a video that is making arounds this week of a woman washing her baby's soiled garments in her kitchen sink. Mm. The woman held the nozzle over the baby's clothes as the brown colored water spilled into the drain. Be careful where you eat, guys. I don't understand. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of videos of like people bathing their children in the sink. You're, you're cleaning a poopoo pants, poopoo bum in the kitchen sink. You now go and drop your plates in the sink. Like when they say you can't eat at everyone's house, you can't eat in everyone's house. No, nah, no, nah, do you know what? That's. um. It shocks me that people generally wake up in the morning and say, yeah, that's that's what I want to have my, I want to bath my child where I wash my plates, where my, my chicken yesterday was just surfacing, where I wash, where I clean my meat. Like, girl, like, what? Like, it's nasty. And for me personally, yeah, those people, no, it's just disgusting, bro. You, you, you just, you're setting a standard of how your kids are going to grow up. Yeah. Like, for me, yeah, I go off what my parents have done. Mm-hmm. So if my parents are washing in the bath, I'm going to go and do the same thing they yeah. do. So monkey see, monkey do, bro. That is disgusting. And you're setting a president for the rest of your kids' You're setting life. a president. Do you, are you someone that when you were younger, your mum let you eat in your in people's house and stuff like that? No. Like, it was a thing or like, even like, and I don't understand why, but now I do. Yeah, back now in the I day, do, yeah. Now I do, because before I'm like, bro, I'm hungry, innit? Like, this, this is an auntie who we both come to the house, so mm-hmm. clearly you respect her a little bit. Mm-hmm. She's offering food, and you're saying, no, no I'm yeah. not hungry. Do you know what's in my stomach? You don't know. You can't Why are you speaking for me? That, that my belly's speaking German mm-hmm. right now, and I need to eat. Mm-hmm. But she'll be like, no. Then it's like, when I'll get older now, like she would explain to me, really, who this person is, mm-hmm. and how she's being a fake-ass friend, but at the same time... <laughs> Like, this auntie is just not with it. Like, you get me? The way the house is set up. Like, my mom was very particular about mm-hmm. how people manage their house. Mm-hmm. Not to say that my house was the greatest crib, but there was a formation in the way my kitchen looked. Or there was a formation in the way that the cleanliness. Organized. Organization, yeah. isn't it? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, I, I understand. However, going back to what you just said about the sink, that is mm-hmm. disgusting. That's disgusting. Your baby, do you know how much chemicals or how much bacteria you're exposing your your kid to? Yeah, because we clean the sink with bleach. We well, clean bleach, the sink right. with if your son, if, your, if your if your if your your child's skin starts to peel now, I don't need to say that it's it's the government. It's the government it's you. water. It's They'll you. Say it's, the, it's the water in the in this in the sink that's yeah, causing nah, it. No, man, that's nasty, man. Like, come on, man. No, it's disgusting. I remember the first time that I experienced the look. So, you know, your mum wouldn't, like, if you're in someone's house. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Your mum would never say no. My mum would never yeah, say yeah. no for me. She'd, she'd do this to, to indicate yeah. that if you don't say no, I'll I will, I will, I will, I yeah. will deal with you. Yeah. 
So I remember one time, one auntie offered us KFC. I don't know why this is my a distinct memory. My auntie offered us KFC. And me being me, I said, yes. Mm. And my mom was doing this. And I'm looking, I said, why are you looking at me like that? I said, why are you looking at me like that? So mm. my mom, so the woman, my mom said, okay. My mom didn't say anything. We ate the KFC. When we got into the car, my mom didn't even wait till we get home. As we got to the car, do you remember what beats me? Yeah, of course, do man. Do you remember what beats me? It, it's, and you know, they'll look, yeah, do this. Ow! <laughs> what up? Say, no, no. And if they don't finish. They said the boost. They, oh, if it's, I tell oh, you God, to man, do that again, you yeah, yeah. will do that. Yeah, it's, it's like a song, it's like a beat. Oh, man. I, 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 that's happened to me many times as well. But, and I think sometimes, see, especially KFC, something like that, yeah, that. You haven't even bought for your child. Mm -hmm. Someone is going to go buy it for your child. Do you think it's a pride thing? Definitely a pride thing. And I, I, I don't know where that stems from because personally, yeah, if you said to me right now, to my son, oh, Akeem, I'm going to buy you some KFC. I'd be like, fine. That's that's money I'm not spending. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> go that's ahead. How, that's how I look at it. Maybe yeah. the cost of living price wasn't that high. It was, then, yeah. It? And people were able to buy it on their own. But for me, my mom would never let anyone, like, unless it was like genuinely a family member who has is coming to my house and is buying that for us. They know we're at the house and they'll buy us McDonald's. Oh, appreciate it. You get me? I'll eat the food and whatever. One thing I've never received though is money from any birthday that I was I was given money for. I've never received it to this day. Did they did they actually give it to you though? Never. Like so for example, like my parents my parents gave me money, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if an auntie gave me a, a card and there was money in there, my mum would say I would hold it for you, yeah? And oh God, I've never seen that money. Maybe it's been spent on me down the line. I don't know. Somewhere, somehow. But I've never seen it. That's my mum. Like, I've, I've been like, oh yeah, come on, can I get that £10 for my birthday? Don't worry, I'll hold it for you. For I'll hold it for you. Okay, so don't worry, you just, you just do it. Don't worry. And then my dad would give me a pound. But I need the £10. Where's the, where's the rest? Where's the nine quid? Where's the nine quid? But it is what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day. The thing is, my mum would very... My, my, like, if anybody gave me money and I asked for the money back, my mum would... She'd be like, but when I washed your... Yeah, clothes yeah, starts becoming it, that oh, you take Joyce, a I've got something for you talk to me so I was watching something on TikTok yeah mm -hmm. and it was like how black parents say sorry yeah okay and it was basically yeah uh, this guy came out of the, the man come out of his room and he was like so um, that game that you wanted what's it Carl <laughs> and what I, that, that reminded me of my pops yeah mm -hmm. so I remember one time yeah like I got in trouble and then my dad he just yeah done a madness yeah and he felt bad. Mm -hmm. So instead of him saying sorry, yeah, he said, go, you can go out. <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> all, all right then. Received. Then, yeah, but then it's like certain things you'd be like, you'd be like, how much was that? That game. Okay, go and buy it. <laughs> but that's because he knows He's, he's, he's violated, isn't it? So he's that's him, but he wouldn't say sorry, innit? Good old it? lack of accountability. Yeah, just lack of accountability. <laughs> all right, I'm going to make you happy now. Because you know, all I want to do is go outside and play. That's all I want to do. So if you allow me to do that, I'm happy. I've forgiven you, basically. My mum was, are you, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? Listen, yeah. I'm, I, I, I keep saying to people, like, God forbid, yeah, but you see, I could really be poisoned and yeah. then, I, because I love food. Yeah, yeah. I am in love with food. So my mum said, oh, yeah, are you hungry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's literally, that is literally me. I love it. That's all, that's all. I didn't need the games. I didn't need outside. If my mom says she's going to buy me something, or she's like, oh, I, I made you, or oh, I made you do the good side. <laughs> See, I like granite soup, yeah. I What's granite like, soup? Granite soup's, uh, it's like peanut stew. Like, it's, Oh, it's, I had, yeah, yeah. is that, um, is that, do Congolese people eat it? I think so. I'm, I know Ghanaian. Because I, I recently, too, yeah. I recently had yeah. a peanut, saucy soup for yeah. the first time ever and it was fabulous yeah, yeah i remember like that was my soup when i was mm -hmm. growing up so if my mom says she's making that for me oh i'll clean the dishes for you mom <laughs> i will hoover the house you see that bathroom that you want me to scrub i will scrub it on your knees just <laughs> make sure that that granite soup's there and then when i eat it every bite is just making sense scrumdiddly like, i'm just have well, you had it recently no i stopped eating it now so like the oil that, oh yeah, the palm oil. Hey, that the oil. oil. So, so like, this has happened now, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
my taste buds have now changed because mm-hmm. I have a different acquired taste now because I wasn't because yeah, well, <laughs> uh, well, well, I wasn't able to go and eat these Japanese food or go and eat fill like, me your steak yeah you know like Michelin star <laughs> you know sushi roll you know all of those things yeah so you start to appreciate the lack of oil in food yeah mm-hmm. and some of the food that man like you know I won't say my mum per se but in terms of African dishes it's heavily centred around oil isn't it yeah and I never forget, I was eating some food. I went to a restaurant, I ate this food, and I was like, why do I feel something in my stomach? And it wasn't like the food wasn't cooked well. It's just that it was too much oil. Yeah. And I hadn't had, have, hadn't had so much oil Ooh, in a while. while. And because I've moved out of my mum's house, like I'm, I'm either cooking for myself or ordering, or you know what I'm trying to say? So mm-hmm. now I don't eat that one, but mm-hmm. there's cassava leaf. I'll eat that to the day I die. Yeah, that's, that's like my Yeah, staple. but cassava leaf and what? It's no cassava leaf is it's it's a stew basically that has okay. beef and chicken in it and it's like a stew or over rice. So oh, like, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that's my favorite. Then we have um, it's called potato leaf, but we say potato leaf. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's like leaves, uh, but made into a stew as well. It's it's hard to explain. Um, so those are the things that I, c- I can't let go of. Like mm-hmm. they're it, like when my mum makes that for me, yeah, it's. It's, okay. yeah, yeah. we're about to go yeah, down. we're about to go down. Mouth is all oily. Cancel, cancel every appointment after. Cancel, cause... And then you sit down and <laughs> let there be super malt. Yeah, let yeah. there be super <laughs> you need malt to there. That. You need because to that's, that's better than water. When you're eating them kind of food, super malt is better than water, bro. Super malt is a meal on its own. It's not. You know... We've <laughs> like, the same life. If you're hungry and there's no food in the crib, crack a supermarket open. Because it's wheat. Like you're literally it's drinking filling. carbs. It's you're literally filling. drinking carbs. It's filling. It's filling. It's filling. Imagine double carbs, cassava plus supermarket. I'm not a, hmm. a, a big boy. <laughs> ser- seriously, the world's eating when I was younger. I should have been here, you know. Oh no, it hit me. Oh, now I was a big girl. Now it hit it's me. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. But it's sincere. It's sincere. You know. Thank you. Know? <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. <laughs> no, seriously, I should have been a. You know them, no, them, them. I really hate people like you, though. I, I, I cannot stand people like yeah. you that eat, no, eat, I eat, eat, like eat and it doesn't show. Yo, with your, with your, with your goddamn high metabolism. And you know what? Yeah, I'm getting to that stage right now where it should slow down, but it's just pew pew. Like if I eat, yeah, just know there needs to be a toilet in the next hour around me, because it. Pfft. Honestly, when I eat, it shows. Yeah. Every time I eat, if I eat, it's in my cheeks, it's in my stomach, everything. I'm just like, well, it is what it, it, it is. What is what it, it is. is what it is. It I it can't keep myself. Enjoyment always. Enjoyment over aesthetic always. Oh, <laughs> like, somebody's gonna love me. One day, what they do? Yeah. Oh, they do. Oh. Sh- <laughs> I want to talk to you. We've got word of the week. So yeah. we're trying to have some takeaways on this show mm. and we decided to do word of the week every week. And this week we have growth. Yes. And I thought it was the best word to give to you because I feel like just in terms of your mental, spiritual and emotional growth, we have seen you develop into a real kink. Oh, we like that. Thank you, man. And we have the um, quote of this week and growth is painful, change is painful, but nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. Mm. So talk to me about how you feel like you've grown. We've been talking about school. We've been talking about our, you know, our past life. When you look back at Harry Pinero at 14, Mm. how does he compare to Harry at 45? Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, that was a fantastic one. You know what, Joyce? Well done. Well done. I'm actually going to be 32 next month as well. So, um, that was incredible. I'll get you back one day as well. Oh, that's going to be a great clip. Um, how do I compare? Well, I think I was very, very raw with um, how I would uh, handle my emotions, my feelings. I think um, I was definitely, um, you know, I'll say a product of my environment. Um, and my environment was very much so like, it was a very violent environment. There was a lot of like, you had to grow up quicker than you needed to. Um, and I was doing things that like, people at, at the age of 20 and 16, 18 are doing right now. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. And we was obviously exposed to a lot of stuff that probably 
wasn't good for us and i know it wasn't good for us as well so my decisions were based off again what i had seen before me um and it didn't correlate with again religion and my family's upbringing how they viewed um how uh, th their son should be raised and stuff in it and i think um knowing that it didn't you know align with me i think it was always in my heart and i was always battling with you know my life but then what i want my life to be and i think that was probably why i never really had like a i, I had a great like childhood i loved it to, to to bits but i always knew deep down that this is not the way i want to live and this is not the way i should live so i think um i didn't have it figured out and i think at that time luckily for me i did i did i felt like i had a lot of chances to change and the minute that all them chances went is when I really grew up, which was 25. So I could say from 14 to 25, I was genuinely was just coasting through life and mm -hmm. allowing whatever was happening in my life to basically dictate how I was living my life. So it wasn't like I, I one day I said, this is how I'm gonna change my life and I'm gonna do it. Whereas I saw a lot of my friends do that. I saw a lot of my friends who was on the streets with me say I'm out of it by 18 and I was still there. Mm -hmm. And I think I was just accustomed to this life and I was like, well, if this is gonna be my life, then it is what it is. And then you just realize as time goes on here yeah, that it, it gets boring, it gets soul destroying, who you are as a person starts to creep out. But then obviously you're, you know, the way you've been living your life will push that back. And I think God has a, an incredible way of, of showing you who you are yeah. by taking everything away from you. And I think when that happened, that's when I was able to like, you know, okay, cool. I am this person, let me be comfortable with being who I am and, and, and tap into that. And I think at the age of 25, that's when I started tapping into it. That's when I, I got my first ever job. That's when I literally was started to listen to what my parents were saying. Not all the way, but I was taking in their information. I stopped hanging with certain people that I knew that the more I'm around you, the more badness that I'm on, or yeah. the more chance I have to go to jail, or the more madnesses that we're gonna get into. So you have to make those conscious decisions for yourself because born alone, die alone, and it's only you that's gonna answer to God at the end of the day, and it's only you that's gonna be able to change your destiny. Doing those things and going through what I went through was, was the tools that I didn't know I needed to build me up to be this person that I am today. Mm -hmm. So everything that I have gone through from the L's, from the you know the the situations from me getting hospital to the things that I've even done to other people, like those things are all part of this journey that I've now been able to be able to witness and say, uh, you know, some people don't even get to look back because they they don't even make it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm I felt very grateful that I was able to look back and say, okay, cool, this is long, this don't make sense. And um, me getting my first job was the best thing for me because it was like, it humbled me. Yeah. I learned the value of the pound. I learned, you know what, family, my mum and dad are actually right. You know, religion is very important. When they tell you about, you know, watch out for these friends, it's genuinely true. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, like, it was a very massive learning curve for me. But then the growth part of it was when you can actually look back at that and be like, I'm not mad at what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. That needed to happen. But this is now going to be my destiny. And I, and I remember, like, at the age of 26, 27, saying to myself, I'm going to be an entertainer. I am actually going to channel and put my mind to this and actually be serious. Because I started and stopped a lot of things in my life because I didn't really believe in it. I was doing it for my parents. I yeah. was doing it for myself. But when I did it for myself, I was able to like really grow. And I think you really have to like accept and forgive yourself as well. Yeah. A lot of people don't forgive themselves for the things that they've done or the things yeah. that they've gone through. I was able to forgive myself and that's what allowed me to like, I guess, you know, have a good trajectory. And um, it's, I'm still learning. I'm still growing as I, as I get along. And like, even with me, like, up until recently, like I, I have a temper and I was able to like say, okay, cool. I react very quickly to things. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually just, okay, cool, Wusa. I'm gonna start praying more. I'm gonna start, you know, when I can see something and I'm, I'm getting a bit heated, calm myself down. Yeah. Like, that takes a lot of growth, like, cause it doesn't happen overnight. And um, it takes a lot of self-awareness as well. Defo, but then you sometimes like when you do things or you've gone through a situation with someone or, you know, you say you, for example, you had road rage and you've hopped out your car and you've done something, whatever, yeah? When you get back in your car and you drive off and you explain it to someone, when you feel bad about the situation, you feel like it's wrong, it's good to have that feeling before it's about to happen. Yeah. And that takes growth, that takes time, innit? And I'm at that place now where like, if I see someone still in the middle finger up when they're driving, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? And it's like, that is, um, that for me, it's like, it's, it's beautiful to see that in my own self. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. 14 year old, I would say like the 14 year old is very proud of the 45 year old Harry, as you said, because it's like, now I'm like, you know what? I've made myself proud in it. I'm happy of the person that I'm becoming. 
and I can't wait to see what I'm going to be like when I'm older as well, inshallah. I feel like the, it's funny because you were saying um, there's a reoccurring thing mm. where you're like, I didn't listen to my parents, I didn't listen to my parents. And you were like, being 25, I actually took the advice of what my parents was telling me and I got my first job. I feel like sometimes we have people in our lives that you feel like they're against you, mm -hmm. but a lot of times with our parents, they have the life experience that we don't have. Mm. So sometimes the advice that they give us, we just need to take it. Yeah, it's coming from a place like my mom and dad, they've, I forget, I forgot when I was growing up that mm -hmm. these people are adults. They're actually adults, yeah. Like they've and they've lived this, they've yeah. They've lived it, they've traveled from Africa to come to England. And that doesn't, you don't do that if you're like, you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and it's now that like, when my dad used to say, no, there'll come a time where you say, I should have listened to my dad. Maybe I won't be here no more. Maybe you'll be living with your family, but you will say, my dad mm -hmm. was right. And he didn't lie. And and it's coming from a place of love, you know. 100%. It's, sometimes it's a bit hard, love, because maybe they don't know how to... You articulate know, themselves articulate well, yeah. Articulate themselves well. And they're all, everyone's human beings, you know mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say? Or maybe, like, I'm not able to take in what they're saying, but the essence of what they're saying is so real, so true. And I think... Um, uh, everything that my dad and mum said, not everything, but more, more, more than likely everything they've said has been true and has come from the right place. So that's why I feel like our relationship is such in a beautiful place right now because it's like they're over what's happened between us now. Mm -hmm. They're just like, I'm just happy things are in the right place right now. And me too as well. And like you're good, Being yeah. able to call my mum and joke with her or being able to call my dad and joke with her are things that I never thought I'd be able to do because mm -hmm. of the way I was living. And the relationship I had with my parents and now it's a total different place that's growth that is the, the element of growth like you know what I, mean? I love that in terms of word of the week we have some stuff that we want to give back to you we want to advise you and you're not know, funny enough you've touched on a lot of the stuff that already had here so number one is be careful of the company you keep mm -hmm. so surrounding yourself with positive influences is an important part of personal growth it includes surrounding yourself with people who inspire you motivate you and support you positive influences can also come from books podcasts or other forms of media that inspire and motivate you by surrounding yourself with positive influences you can stay motivated and focus on your goals and i 100 percent agree i feel like for some reason when we were younger being bad was good mm. being being around bad people and being the bad girl and the bad boy was the you know the in the thing. cool the in thing mm. and it was like being smart and intelligent and positive was deemed to be oh that's loser behavior which i think when i when i grew up thinking about it it really does blow my mind mm. the fact that we thought that because i'm sure all those kids that were doing after after school club mathematics and chess i went on to go and do crypto and be millionaires <laughs> yeah like <laughs> word I'm, I'm sure they have but definitely surrounding yourself with with positive people number two is forgiving yourself mm -hmm. so the hardest part of growth sometimes can be forgiving ourselves we beat ourselves up and play past scenarios in our heads over and over yep filling ourselves with shame and condemnations. After you sought forgiveness from the people you've hurt or offended, also learn to forgive yourself. There's no point in beating yourself up over a mistake you made three years ago. So let it go so you can grow. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was a big part of my development and growth, being able to forgive myself, being able to just come to terms with some of the decisions that I made and just learn that, you can evolve and you can come out of it and you can grow from it and you can and and we all have opportunity to grow and develop and unlearn things mm. as well definitely a lot of unlearning and finally set goals so personal growth requires setting goals by providing direction and motivation it helps you achieve what you want out of life to set smart goals you must make them specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound Maintaining focus and motivation can be achieved by setting realistic goals and tracking your progress. Are you a man that sets goals? Yes, I do. I set goals um, and I'm very much so focused on on getting them done mm -hmm. because um, setting goals and leaving them hanging, I think is so crap. Yeah. I really, really set them and, and, and do them. I think also having other things apart from work that keep you motivated is a very good, very good thing as well. Like some people go to the gym, some people read. Some people, um, med they meditate, some people pray, whatever you've got to mm -hmm. do. I think that contributes also to your dreams as well. So setting goals and achieving them is, is, is an elite feeling. And I think it, yeah. it can always be done. I want to add one more. Mm -hmm. That's not the thing. I want to definitely add accountability, mm -hmm. accountability to the mix. There are some people who do not know 
that they are the reason of their own failure. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times it's easier to blame other things. It's easier to blame your upbringing. It's easier to blame the people around you. It's easier to blame, you know, everything else except your own actions. I feel like the the day that I decided that I, not necessarily the problem, but I am a contributing factor to why my life the way, the way, why my life is the way it is. Mm. I felt like it allowed me to undo a lot of things. I realized similar to you that I do have a temper. Mm. I realized that I I do have the tendency to be lazy. I do have the tendency to do certain things that do not allow me to grow and do Mm. not allow me to develop. Not that, oh, you know, well, I've got ADHD, so here we are. Or my mom did this to me when I was five, so oh, here we are. Like, I really decided to take my life by the horns and realize that I am conscious of my own decisions. I'm conscious of who I am and who I want to be and I can control that. Mm. And I feel like when I when I changed my mindset to that, I, I then felt like I definitely grew. I definitely grew, definitely. Yeah. Grew definitely, definitely. No, no, definitely, definitely grew. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely, 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 definitely. No, but it's true because like, if you, I feel like if you don't, um, if you don't accept that, okay, I'm not gonna lie, it was me. Mm-hmm. That was me. I messed up. Yeah. And you're very defensive, yeah? Deep down in your heart, you know mm-hmm. that you're being, that you're wrong. That will come and attack you in a time where it's, it, it just, it's like it builds, it builds, builds, builds. And then you start to run away from accountability so mm-hmm. much so that you can't even say, you know what is me? I'm the one that has the problem. Yeah. I'm going to deal with it. Give me time. And I think it's always about, it's, I think if you've got a relationship, you've got a friendship, saying to somebody, listen, I'm a bit messed up. Mm-hmm. Just give me some time. Yeah. yeah. And allow me, just know that when this happens, this is because of this. And it's not right, but I'm going to work on it. Mm-hmm. I think that is how things become healthy when you're taking accountability. Cocktails and takeaways. I've never this your head is taking me out. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. But I, the reason why I'm I'm, I'm not um, covering it at mm-hmm. all is because it's been done for a religious reason. So I'm gonna no, wear but you it. you have a good head shape. Yeah, there's some there's some people that don't have the capability of rocking bold yeah. because you can tell every time they've fallen down the stairs, you can tell every time that they've no. been kicked. You can tell, like, well, look, the head look, shape is... I've got a bus head here. Split my head when what? I was younger. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've, I've got scars all over, man. How did you bust your head? Something silly. It's me, it? yeah, yeah. So I was walking down the steps and who told me to jump? Who okay. told me to jump? So you're obviously the problem. Bump. And then I was like, why is it wet? How old were you here? I was in secondary school. Why am I racking my brain and feeling that you were doing content at your big age of stairs jumping down? No, no, down? no. I w- that, that was, um, no, that wasn't stairs time. This is when I was like 13, 14. I was in secondary school. But you did do content on the stairs. Yeah, of course. That's, <laughs> and, and that's, can you imagine? I bust my head on the stairs and I made a career <laughs> You're back from on it. The stairs. Uh, you know, I love the stairs. <laughs> we love a good old stairs. But we are going to play again. We love this game. Obviously, this is the cultural questionnaire. Mm. And we ask our co hosts questions about the culture okay and we call this game are you smart all right are you smart hp like the sars we'll find out (laughs) (laughs) we'll find out right we've got 10 questions all right you can only give me one answer let's go then you can't tell me becky suzy direct like the the beats that's coming out of your account yours (laughs) yours (laughs) yours Are you ready? I'm ready. Question number one. Which animal features on the logo of the brand Lacoste? Crocodile or alligator. They're the same thing. What are you locking in? Crocodile. That is correct. That's what well, we that like. <laughs> easy peasy. That's what we like. Because I used to be a Lacoste dude when I was younger. Yeah, now come in. So yeah, that's one nil to Harry P. Question number two. Let's get it. Angelina Jolie and Alicia Vikander have played both. <laughs> now, English is a good language. <laughs> it's a good I said, language. Mm. 
Angelina Jolie and Alicia Vikander have played which iconic female video character on film? Lara Croft. Lara Croft. Tomb Raider. Are you locking that in? Lock it in. Lock it in. Net. That is correct. Yes. Can I say one thing, Joyce? You've got an incredible poker face. Because you're not even giving up nothing. Not even a... Nothing. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Direct. I do. <laughs> Question number three. Okay. <clears throat> Caracas. English? Caracas. Caracas. Car Caracas? <laughs> Caracas, yeah? Okay, good one. <laughs> All right. Caracas. Yes. Caracas. Mm -hmm. Is the capital of which South American country? Caracas. Wow. Well done. You got me. You got me. Caracas. So it's the capital of South American country, all right? Yes. Which South American country? country all right for some reason there's three countries which i think it could be yeah bolivia not argentina i know that for sure mexico ha you got me ha, 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 you got me all right i've got to lock in an answer now, Caracas, defo heard that before, but Mexico, Mexico City. So get out of that. Get that out of the way. <laughs> Throw you away. Argentina's Buenos Aires. <laughs> so we get that out of the way. Caracas, it's not Brazil, because I know what that is. That's Brasilia. Um, um, so I'm going to go with, actually, what you know I'm going to go with? Caracas? Caracas. Five, four, three, two, I'm trying to say Mexico. one. You're locking in Mexico? Mm. Even though it's Mexico City, but yeah. Honorable mention Bolivia. That is incorrect. The answer is Venezuela. Venezuela, but I've heard Caracas before. You got me. Venezuela. Mm. Mm. Okay. Question number four. All right. In fashion, what does the initials LBD stand for? Long big dick. <laughs> no. no. LBD in fashion. Yes. Yeah. See, this is the thing. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, good day for you, man. Well done, because the thing is, you've come here to just make me look like a idiot. But it's all right. Uh, LVD, London. Boys dancing. Are you locking that in? No, I'm not. Why for that? Um, fashion, right? In Large. fashion. No. What does the initials LBD stand for? Yeah, this is mad. All right, well, I'm going to learn something from this at the end of the day. So I'm going to go with large body this organization. And I'm looking it in. That is incorrect. Oh, wow. The answer is little black dress. If it wasn't Ramadan, <laughs> I'll tell you to F off. That's what I would say. Little black dress. Little black dress. Okay. Little black dress. Okay, okay. Two two. That's how I'm that's how I'm playing this game right now. Two two. Yeah, even though I've got two right, two wrong, but I'm saying it's two two. On to the next one. What is the name of the fictional continent in the TV series Game of Thrones? Continent? Wow! 
Taking off my shades for this one. So, how can I not know? I put them back on now. How can I not know this? The North remembers. The North will remember. Oh my God, Joyce, you absolute. Ah! Well done. Okay. So, Game of Thrones. No, I'm at Castle Rock. No. Hey. The continent, yeah? The continent. Fictional continent. Yeah, I've lost my absolute mind not to know this. Me, that, that's what's Game of Thrones day in, day out. What are you locking in, Harry? Um, I am going to lock in. Oh, my God. I feel so disrespected to myself. Sorry to everybody who I've, I've said I'm a Game of Thrones member with. I'm just going to go Castle Rock, man. That is horrible for me. We are locking in Castle Rock. And that's wrong. Oh, man, that is That terrible. is incorrect. The answer is Westeros. Wester Westeros. You're right, it's Westeros. Oh, Westeros. It's Westeros. been a long time. And to be honest, the way it ended, yeah, is why I'm really, really upset. But Agreed. House of Dragon is good. House, House of Dragon is very good. It's very good. It's incredible. Very good. Can't wait for season two. Fabulous, yeah, fabuloso. Yeah, all right, cool, 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 cool. I need to get it back. I need to get it back. Question number six. All right, then. What is the largest planet in our solar system? The sun. <laughs> the sun's a planet. No, it's a star. So I would go Jupiter. Are you locking that in? Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus. Uh, no. Hey, listen to me. I said the sun because the sun is the biggest thing ever. However, it's a star. So I'm going with Jupiter. Are you locking that in? It's locked. The key, can't even open it. That is correct. That is correct. No, Come on now, baby. You see, it's... It's 3-3, three, three, baby. It's 3-3. Three, three. All right, let's go. <clears throat> the smallest bone in the human body is located in the ear. True or false? So this is considered a bone, right? This stuff here. But then... Nah, it's not like... Not like this. Yeah. My little toe, though. Don't play with that one though. That little toe's tiny in a ras. When you're born, what's smaller, that toe or this one? I'm gonna go false. But then why would they? Why would they say air? They would say something else that's small. Ha. <laughs> hey, so you got me. Okay. Ip dip do. Wait. Ip dip do. It's not you. Tell your uncle he needs to do a poo. Correct. Great lyrics. So we're locking in true. That is correct. It's correct because what? you believe in the riddles. So it's now 4-3 and I'm telling you, I ain't losing this now. Even though I've kind of lost anyway. But anyway, 4-3. <laughs> Question number eight. Yes. Multiple choice. Who was the lead singer of the band Queen. A, David Bowie. B, Mick Jagger. C, Freddie Mercury. Mick Jagger. No, that's Rolling Stones. Hey. Come on, C. Hey. So I know it's de definitely either Freddie Mercury or um, Mick Jagger. You said Queen, right? Yes. I'm going Freddie Mercury. Yeah, I'm going Freddie Mercury. Are you locking that in? It's locked. It's locked. Because Queen, Rolling Stones, Rolling Stone, Mick Jagger, Queen. Wow, wow, wow. You got me there. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go with Freddie Mercury. Locked it in. 
that is correct. Of well course it is. Well done, Mine. it is Freddie Mercury. Come on now. Question number nine. Yes, sir. Finish the saying. Mm-hmm. Blank favors the bold. Hmm. Heard this before. Opportunity favors the bold. No, don't know just that one. Opportunity favors the bold. Are ah, you saying that because my hair's gone? You are idiots. You, you. Because my hair's gone. And you're looking at you look. Why are you looking at for? Fortune. There it is. Fortune favors the bold. Yeah, fortune. Whatever, whatever you just said. Fake fortune. Wait, say that again. So what was the thing? Blank. Blank. Yeah. Favors the bold. Fortune. I think fortune. Are you locking? I'm locking that it in. in. I actually hate you back. Right? Yeah, yeah. Hate me. Hate me. All you want. That is correct. It's he's <laughs> correct. Because <laughs> I was thinking opportunity. No, fortune. There you go. Well I'm done. on a little roll right now. You get me? I'm rolling. <laughs> final questions. The final countdown. Da-na-na-na. Which country has won the most FIFA World Cups? Well, that would be Germany. Germany have won the most World Cups. If not that, then it's Brazil. But I'm sure it's Germany. Are you locking that in? I'm locking it in. That is incorrect. Oh, it's Brazil! The answer is Brazil. It's Brazil, isn't it? It's Brazil. It is Brazil. It is Brazil. And But at least I said it though, isn't it? Right? Well, you didn't lock it in. No, I didn't, I didn't say that it was locked in though, did I? Because that's the last one thing you've been saying previously, if it locked in, I, no. didn't, I didn't lock it in. I said, are you locking that in? But you didn't say, is it locked in? Because it's different. I might say, oh, are you going to the shop? But did you go to the shop? Two different things. So I don't know about that one. I think you should bring another card. <laughs> you locked it in. You got it wrong. I can't remember. So all in all, how many did I get? VR, right VR, play it back. What? V what? VR. <laughs> v A R. Okay. So how many? Did I, how many did I get right? You then? got seven. Seriously? If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Wait, hold on now. That's all right. You That's know. It. I'm actually impressed. Seven out of ten. And do you I'm know what? I'm very impressed. Do you know what? Definitely sh- the last one I should have got right. Brazil. Um, no six. Sorry. Yeah. Six. six. Oh yeah. <laughs> six. Well, let's just stop it. Six yeah. out of ten. <laughs> let's just stop it. Now you got yeah. six, six out of ten. Sorry. Sixty percent. Yeah, that's, that's okay. good. That's, that's right. a C. Yeah. That's or a, a B. That's Defo, nothing. Defo should have got you know seventy percent because that's good. That's well. good. But guys, we are going to close it there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Harry, thank you for coming. Anytime. I love and appreciate you. Where do we find you on the Bamba Clark thing uh, there? Well, uh, you find me on Instagram at Harry Panero. Uh, everywhere is Harry Panero, to be honest, because I don't know that. Uh, you see, there's no other Harry. Yeah. So, yeah, Harry Panero, if you want to find me, um, check my YouTube. Same thing, man. I'm everywhere, man. Yes, yeah, you know? sir. And we will be back next week with another bad boy or another bad girl. And I'm motherfucking out. Oh, and if you haven't got your tickets, go and buy it. No, please. go buy them now. Like, literally, what are you waiting for? You're going to see a lot of people. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to yeah. see man of choice in the flesh. Her. I'll see you guys. Bye.